What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. As you can see, it's getting dark out and that's why we're doing a video inside today because I was going to have you out in the garden and before I knew it, the sun started setting because even now, I'm not used to the sun setting at like 4.30. It just, it's so disorienting to me. Being outside in the garden all summer, you get so used to the sun setting at like 8.30, 9 o'clock and you kind of take that sunlight for granted so that when you lose it, it's like, oh man, where'd my, where'd my day go? And since my job is to create content, it's kind of difficult to film when it's dark out. So, uh, so we're going to be inside today talking about how to properly prune up your citruses. And this was brought about because uh, all of you have been commenting and asking me how I keep my citruses producing, contained, and healthy, even as an indoor house plant. And this has come up uh, on our growing guides. Anytime we just feature these plants, or even if we're just talking about our our coffee tree, they see the citrus and they're like, hey, what about the citrus? So it always kind of comes back to the citrus and I figured, you know what, let's make a video on it because I think it's really gonna help you all out because citrus are predominantly seen as a outdoor plant. Um, they're grown in warm weather climates that are typically seen as uh, like zone, probably zone 10 and below. Um, I'm not quite sure if you get a citrus in zone nine, but I imagine you probably could get some cold hardy citrus in zone nine even. Um, but let's just say zone 9 to 13. So most of the United States and the rest of the world really is not able to grow citrus outside. But we are really lucky to have some indoor friendly citruses. These are citruses that are grafted onto rootstocks that keep them fairly contained and allow us to grow in containers that we can then keep them inside as houseplants. Which is really awesome because here in Michigan, <laughs> we're so far away from even close to zone nine, we're about 600 miles away. So not even close to, uh, to where we could even come close to growing these outside. Now these do go outside in the summertime. That's a nice little added bonus. Um, gets them out of the house, frees up some space in the house, but also gets them some much needed sunlight and humidity and, and warmth in the summertime. Um, but for about three quarters of the year, they find themselves in the house. And so I wanna go through how to properly prune them because there are quite a few steps um, that I'm gonna break down with how to prune them so that they have the best health, the best structure, keep them the most contained that they can be. Um, because the first thing to note is that citruses can grow really big. An untamed wild citrus that's never been pruned or taken care of can be 30, 40 feet tall by 30, 40 feet wide. I mean, these things are absolutely insane when you see them. The branches on these things are just massive and they get so big. And you can clearly see that we don't have that luxury in the house, uh, but at least I don't. I would love to have a glass house where I could put these and just let them kind of go crazy, but we just don't. And so we do have to take steps to keep them contained. So the first step that we're going to do, I'm gonna bring you all in close and we're gonna talk about topping. It's very, very important to top your citruses. Um, I typically say, any more than about four and a half, five feet tall is as tall as I want them to get. And the reason why is because in a container, they have limited root space as well as limited soil and water so that the taller they get, the more stressed they get. One big problem I see so many people having is they say, my citrus looks really healthy, but it's not giving me any fruit. How come? And that's because the amount of energy, nutrients, and water that has to come up to the very top of the plant is so minimal because of the confinement that it's in, just the really you know close quarters container that it's planted in, that it generally does not have enough energy to set fruit up top, if at all. And so because there's so much energy being uh, basically diluted throughout the plant in such a small container, there's really not enough uh, energy for you to get any fruit on the plant. So that's usually why. And so I'm gonna show you how I top my plant. Um, this Washington navel orange is in need of a, is in need of a topping. You'll notice that um, when it is in need of a topping, it's very evident. And that's because it starts to have what we call tip dieback. Tip dieback, or otherwise known as flagging, um, there's two terms, both mean the same exact thing. You can even see it outside too. If you have root damage on your trees, doesn't matter if it's an ornamental or fruit or, or uh, ornamental or like a fruiting tree, um, you'll see what's called flagging. And this can typically happen from root die off or like root stress. Once I start seeing this flagging, as I'll show you, that's when we wanna come in and, and really regulate the height because it's clearly telling you, hey, I'm trying to grow like I naturally would, but something's going on. I don't know what it is, but uh, my roots are not, and my roots are not giving me what I'm requiring and uh, I'm gonna have to drop some foliage. So that's kind of what it's telling you. And I don't speak plant, but uh, I do know enough about plant language to tell you that's, 
that's clearly a root problem there, especially if the rest of the plant is healthy. So, all right, let's check it out. I'm gonna show you how I top my plant first, and that's the biggest thing to, uh, to properly pruning your trees, and then we'll get into some finer steps later. All right, so this plant here is, like I said, I mean, this is, here's my chin. So this is about five and a half feet tall. I mean, this is a pretty tall citrus, a little bit too tall for its own good. And you'll notice here, there's uh, some flagging. Flagging is basically just the dying back of the branches. And what you'll see is that the very tips of a lot of these, uh, they look healthy, they look healthy, but the foliage is not getting bigger, it's in fact getting smaller. And you'll also notice that a lot of the new growth, it's missing, it's missing the leaves. So um, I'm gonna clip this off anyway so I can show you because I can't get it close enough to the camera, unfortunately. But you'll notice, see that? All that foliage there, those were actually young leaves that fell off. That's the beginning signs of flagging. And as they begin to fall off, it looks more like this, which is, uh, which is just the, there we go, focus on that. All right, one second, hold on, there you go. Okay, so uh, when you start to get the flagging, it starts to, it, st it still stays green, but then it drops all the leaves. It does that in hopes that if it gets more water, it'll push some more leaves out of these little side buds here. And, um, and uh, sorry, it's going out of focus there because it's such a small thing to focus on, but it'll hopes, in, in hopes to keep it alive, it'll keep these buds alive and the branch green, but eventually it just ends up dying. And that's when it looks like this. And so this is more severe stages of flagging. So, uh, so much, so much in the background and so little in the foreground there. So, uh, so um, then this is the more advanced stages of flagging where it completely dies back. And so this is, uh, this is definitely something we need to come back here. And I, what I typically do is I will go back about 25 to 30%. So if this tree, let's say this tree is about five and a half feet tall, I'll take off about a foot and a half of that, of that uh, growth there. I'll trim that back. And then I'll come in here and I'll trim that back. See how there's not a whole lot to show for it. I mean, all of that, and there's just that little tuft of growth there. I'll take that back. And then I'll come in here and there's a lot of growth up here up top, but there's also a lot of flagging. So if I see any flagging on this, I'm just going to keep cutting it back. But since there's nothing further down here for it to, this is the, this is the Meyer lemon. It's already been pruned. So that's kind of defeating the purpose. Now you can see how little foliage is on this. Now that, now that the Meyer lemon's out of the way, um, you can just see you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of foliage here. So if I were to prune, if I were to prune this branch off, I really would not be left with anything. So I'm going to leave this branch here. This is pretty, I mean, this is at about five feet tall, but I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to prune off a lot of this flagging in hopes to kind of reduce the stress load on this tree. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to prune off any growth that is no longer going to fruit. And we can see that based on if it's fruited there before. Um, a lot of these areas here you'll see um, it's got some, some flowers on it. The flowers are a new fruiting zone. That is an area that we want to keep because it's obviously fruiting there. But any areas that have a lot of barky wood um, that are very old growth, that's going to be a zone where it's not really going to fruit again and you're pretty much going to get nothing from it. So this is, a, this is an old zone of, of tree very, very old wood. I'd say it's probably about three years old. I had this tree for a long time. And I'm gonna prune that off. Now you'll see this, this here uh, was just a lot of really barky, old growth. It's not gonna produce anything unless it produces on this tiny little bit of growth here. So you have all of this dedicated to just this little tuft of foliage. And so really what I'm getting at is you want to conserve foliage to kind of uh, biomass. You know, this is all biomass here. And the foliage is the only thing sustaining all of this biomass. So if you have a really bad proportion here, like this is not a good proportion of biomass to foliage. So this much foliage to this much biomass is really off balance. And it's all about balance. That's really what it comes down to with growing citruses indoors is you gotta find that balance where um, you can say, you know, is this really worth keeping on? This is another bad example. Okay, this is super off balance. One little leaf, on this entire branch. Now, this is a whole branch. It looks like one just giant leaf with a stem. This is a whole branch. There was leafing nodes here and it was kind of, it was flagging and then it was like, I think I can hold it on. And so it flagged most of these leaves off here and kept this one, still a really bad proportion. One leaf to a branch, not worth keeping on. Just take that off. 
So we've come in here uh, and really are just kind of aggressively pruning out all of this stuff that's really not worth keeping um, because ultimately it's going to be a benefit to this tree in the end. It's gonna push way more new growth when it realizes that it's healthy again and um, it's gonna be a little bit more proportionate to what it should have in terms of foliage. Now the next thing that I wanna encourage you guys to do when it comes to pruning is pruning off fruit that is not going to ripen. And here I have a prime example. Sadly, I don't wanna admit this, but my very first Washington Naval Orange we thought would ripen up, but it went through some drought. And when it went through some drought, it cracked, it split. <laughs> so this is our very first Washington Naval Orange. And you know, if I was crazy enough, I would wanna take a bite of this. I, some, every part of me wants to try it. There is some juice in here. I just don't know, should I? It is a fruit, it does smell like an orange. You know what? So this was an example. So this is not considered like a ripened fruit. Okay, it's mostly ripened, it is orange. I was leaving it on just for um, kicks and giggles, but it was actually hurting the health of the tree because keeping fruit on, to, I'll taste this in a second. I think I'm crazy enough to do that. But um, so, so uh, you, when you have fruit like this, or if it's got blossom end rot, or if it's starting to mold, or, or, or look like it's going to rot and fall off, get it off the plant. You know, when in doubt, cut it off, because if it doesn't look like a really super healthy piece of fruit, and it looks like there's something wrong with it, it's only going to be doing your tree a disservice, because the amount of energy it takes to put out fruit is incredible. It puts out so much, or it takes so much energy to put out fruit, that sometimes it can fruit itself to death. And so if it's really not going to do the tree any good to actually, or it's not gonna do you or the tree any good, like a win-win situation, get it off the tree because you're only going to be uh, setting the tree back later. So with that out of the way, um, I do, I just wanna try this. I've never had a homegrown Washington Naval Orange and uh, it's my first one. So I'm gonna select off all this bad stuff here. We're gonna give this a shot and just kinda see what it tastes like. Actually, that's surprising. Despite it being not quite ripe, and considering that it's been split open and splayed out like that for about two months, it's pretty impressive. Now, is it the best orange I've ever had? No, but I did really wanna taste it, so I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I was able to bring you all along for it. So, um, the first taste of a homegrown orange. So we talked about topping it to a safe height. We talked about reducing the flagging. We talked about uh, kind of pruning out the, the disproportionate uh, branches that might have too much um, biomass to foliage ratio. And we also talked about pruning off some fruit. I also wanna talk about one more thing, and that's that um, when you have a, a grafted tree, now this is not the case on our tree here because uh, we, we've stayed up on it, but a lot of times people will have a graft point, and that graft is where uh, they took the rootstock and attached it to uh, to the to the actual scion wood. The scion wood is what grows. So this all here, this all here was the scion. And the scion is what is grafted to the root stock, which determines how tall it is, how much fruit it should give, um, the disease resistance, hardiness, cold hardiness, things like that. And the problem is, is if you're not careful, that root stock can sprout. And what happens is then you're growing two, essentially two trees in one. You're growing a wild Calamon and orange, and you're growing a Washington navel orange. And where that becomes a problem, you might think, well, that seems kind of cool. The problem is, is that the rootstock, it grows much faster, it's much more hardy, and uh, it'll take a lot more energy away from the tree that you're actually intending on growing. And what it can do is it can actually kill this off if it notices that it's getting energy and growth from that, uh, from that, the new growth that's coming from the rootstock it'll basically say in a way, well, I don't need you anymore. And it'll kill this off. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you guys still have more questions, make sure to post them in the comments box below. If you're interested in learning how to grow these citruses, make sure to check out our citrus growing guide. Um, I'll post links to that in the description box below as well. And uh, that's about all I got for you. So as always, remember to grow bigger, go home. We'll see you all on the next episode.